First of all, my millions of Dandvat Pranam. In the lotus feet of my spiritual guru, Nitya Lila, Pravishtam, Vishnu, Pasis, Madhvakti, Sit, Pragyan, Kesav, Kustami, Maharaj. And same to my Sikhya Guru, Nitya Lila, Pravishtam, Vishnu, Pasis, Madhvakti, Vedant, Swami, Maharaj. Our program festival is going on very nicely. No complaint. Delicious prasad distribution, sweet and powerful Hari Katha, and so many Vaishnavas and Nyasi. Today we are fortunate. The first sannyasi of Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj. Sri Kirtanananda Prabhu is here. In his, in his Sannyas ceremony, I was there. <laughs> and I used to take him to Delhi here and there to preach. <laughs> and only I received Swamiji with him when they landed to India from Western country first time. I was the first time. There are so many remembering things that I remember. Perhaps he is also remembering. He has served in so many ways to his Gurudev. Especially he made a golden temple in, in Virginia. Very beautiful. I have come there. He was a very strong preacher at that time. So I want that he should speak two words for devotees. Namaste Saraswati Grave Gauravani Pachana Nervasasya Shanyavadi Paska Chade Sadhani. I feel so fortunate to have the privilege of being here in the presence 
of all these wonderful Vaishnavas, and especially in the presence of Narayan Maharaj, who is very dear to me. He assisted Srila Prabhupada in my sannyas ceremony. In fact, he made my ganga. <laughs> so I have always felt very close to Maharaj. <laughs> and I simply beg the blessings of all the assembled Vaishnavas to be able to say a few words in pursuance of the mission of Lord Krishna, of the whole disappular succession down to Srila Prabhupada and Narayan Maharaj is carrying this on very nicely. I have great admiration for him. I've read his books very thoroughly and I appreciate them very much. I'm also humbly trying to follow in the footsteps of these great acharyas to present the message of Lord Krishna, surrender to me utterly. In a way that's understandable to people today. I've had inspiration, I think, to put this in a little easily understood formula of thanking Krishna for now as it is. There's no question of surrendering the past, it's gone. There's no sur question of surrendering the future, it may never come. One can only surrender now. And we surrender to now by being grateful for whatever it is. Because it has been sent by the all good Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. Thank you Krishna for now as it is. But then there is a second part which indicates our independence, our free will. How do I use it in the best way for your service, Lord? Generally, most materialists, they try to seize the present moment and exploit it for their sense gratification. That's one way to use the present moment. That's the way of duality the way of material life, of good and bad, of success and failure. But that's not the spiritual way. That's not the way of Krishna consciousness, which is the way of gratitude for the present moment as it is, whatever it is. It may look very bad to our senses, but we're not these senses, we're not this body, we're not this mind. Thank you, Krishna, for now as it is. How do I use it in the best way for your service, for your pleasure, for your purposes? If we do that, we're fulfilling the instruction Krishna gave Arjuna O oh, Arjuna, surrender to me utterly. By my grace you'll enjoy peace, wealth, and victory. Peace, wealth, and victory don't come by hard work. They don't come by empiric speculation. They don't come by scientific research. They come by the grace of Krishna. And Krishna's grace automatically flows to the surrendered soul. Thank you, Krishna, for now as it is. How do I use it in the best way for your service? Hare Krishna.
Sadhu Maharaj will speak two words. Stand up here. <laughs> We have told about Nardarishi and Vyas. How should we follow Gurudev and follow their his teaching? Then you know. Rishabh Dev, he has hundred sons. Among them, Bharata was eldest and he was Bhakti Man. In his half age, about 50,000 years, left this world as his tool and came to forest to do bhajan of Krishna. And he, after long time, he came in bhav stage, rati stage, premanku, But due to attracted with a dear child, how he lost his three lifetime. lifetime. And what are the teachings from his life? Shiman. Prem Priyajan will tell us about this. Om Gyanatvarandhasya 
First of all, I offer my sastang dalgat for Spanjali. My heart like flowers. Thousands of times with the lotus feet of Asmadiya Pramodad is my Guru Pada Padma. Um Vishnu Pada Ashtodra Sata Sishivan Bhakti Dhanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And secondly, I offer my pranam to my Guru Prampara and to all the assembled Vaishnavas. And thirdly, I mm, offer my sincere apology at the Lotus Feet of Srila Gurudev if I have caused him any distress or disturbance. And also to all the Vaishnavas in our Srila Gurudev's wonderful transcendental family. So Srila Gurudev ordered me to elaborate upon the uh, history of Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj heard teachings from his father, Shaktavesh Avatar Rishabdev. And so when he was 50,000 years old, halfway through his life, he realized the nature of this temporary world and left everything as if it was a, completely has no value like stool. And he went to the forest to practice his meditation and devotion to Sri Krishna. So, actually to Sri Narayan Bhagavan in the form of Narayan. He was meditating in the forest and then one day, as you know, a deer was drinking water in a river. And a lion came and roared and the deer became afraid and in fear tried to escape by jumping across the river. But that female deer, Do, was pregnant and the baby deer in her womb came out and fell into the water. Then the mother deer, she managed to cross the river and come out on the other side. But she was afflicted by the intense trauma of the situation of losing her child and being scared by the ferocious animal. So at that moment, she was about to die from the shock, from the trauma. And as that doe was about to die, she looked, beautiful doe-like eyes, towards Bharat Maharaj. And by her eyes, she asked him, save my child, and then she died. Very pathetic. So Bharat, he immediately got up, and he went to the river and took the baby deer out from the river. Now this deer is helpless. No mother, no one to feed the deer, take care of it. So he adopted the deer like his own child and was feeding the deer and protecting it in all ways every day. And the deer began to grow and grow and grow. So as the deer was growing and growing, Bharat Maharaj, his attachment, Wherever we render service, attachment will come there. Hmm? If we serve things in the material world, attachment will come. If we serve a person of the transcendental world, Srila Gurudev, our Guru Parampara, attachment will come and take us there. But he was, he became attached to a deer in this case. And now, though outwardly he was doing sadhan, but really he was not doing sadhan. He would sit and chant his mantra, and the deer would come and rub his wet nose under his arm. And he would take the deer and take the deer in his lap. Mm -hmm. If the deer would not come, then he is not remembering mantra. He's thinking, where's my baby deer? Mm -hmm. So outwardly he was doing sadhan, but internally he was not doing sadhan. Because now his mind had become attached. Mm -hmm. So one day, other deers came in a herd and that deer left him and went away. But Maharaj became like a mad person wandering here and there, looking around, seeing the footprints of the deer in the sand. Oh, what austerities did the earth planet perform to have the touch of my deer's feet? By the touch of my deer's feet, the world is purified and fit for the performance of sacrifice. He became completely maddened, so much in love hmm, with this baby deer. Our charis commented that actually attachment was for his son, but he had given up and again, it came back and was transposed 
upon the deer, superimposed upon the deer. So in this way, his life was passing and the time of death came. And at the time of death, instead of remembering his Ishtadev, he remembered the deer. And then what happened? As Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Yam Yam Vapismanam Bhavam Chajyatyanti Kalevaram Whatever one thinks of at the time when he gives up the body, Tamtame Vaiti Kuntaya Satha Tad Bhav Bhavita One will become like that. So he left his body and entered into the body of a deer. But because he had come into where? Bhavavasta, Rati. He was very advanced. So even though he took birth as a deer, he was not like other animals. He had a remembrance of his previous life. So when he took birth as a deer, he thought, Hey, what have I done? I've made a very big mistake. I've deviated from my spiritual life, and now I'm in the body of a deer. But in that life, he was determined. Again, I will not become attached. So he did not live with the other deers, but he went away. And he returned to the place where sages, Kapilashram, where many sages were doing uh, their meditation. And as a deer, he would go there and listen to their harikata and associate with them. And he would not eat the fresh green grass. Mm -hmm. That sense, big sense gratification for a deer. Uh, he would only take the dry leaves that had fallen from the trees. And not the fresh leaves from the tree. And in this way, he passed his life as a deer, uh, doing the best sadhana that a deer can do. <laughs> then, quickly that life was over, and again, he took birth. Uh, this time, in a, in a Brahmin family. And he was resolved to continue in his spiritual life without being entangled in social encumbrances. So instead of playing his role as a member of that family, he pretended to be deaf and dumb. So a deaf and dumb person is called Jad. Jad. So in this life we know him as Jad Bharat. Mm -hmm. So his father tried to teach him, uh, please, you pass school, and then afterwards you should wash your hands, but he would wash his hands first and then pass school. His father tried to initiate him into the Brahma Gayatri. Om Bhu <laughs> Repeat after me. Om. And he was like, uh. hmm? He would not, could not repeat the mantra. He can, but he pretended that he was useless and could not do anything. So at that time, his brothers, they thought, he's a useless person. And they treated him. They ill-treated him, actually. When it was time for prasadam, then they would take all the rice. If any burnt grains were stuck to the bottom of the pan, they would scrape that off and that was for him. They didn't give him any good things to eat. But he was happy, he was satisfied. Because his mind was absorbed in Krishna. Hmm? Whatever was, he was, he said thank you for Krishna for what was happening now as it is. Hmm? As Pujapad Kirtananda Swami was just nicely explaining to everyone. So, in this way, he was satisfied and absorbed in, in Krishna. So it happened that one night, his brothers had engaged him, working in a field. And at night, he had to stay there and protect the field from any animals who came to eat the, the crops. So he was there, minding his own business. But at that time, there was a group of Dakoids. And the Dakoids, their philosophy was, if we make a human sacrifice to Goddess Kali, then all our acts of thievery will be successful and will not get caught. So they wanted to make an offering of human sacrifice to Goddess Kali. And they caught someone, but on the way, he escaped. So at that time, the Dakoids were looking around for the person who had escaped, and they came across Jad Bharat in the field. And they thought, well, we've lost him, but he'll do. Hmm? Because he seems like a, some uh, kind of person, no one will miss him. He's a social outcast. So they took Jadabharat and they brought him back to their place of sacrifice. And the priest there who was going to do the sacrifice brought Jadabharat. They fed him, bathed him, decorated him, gave him a garland and everything. And then the priest called him and told him to pay his obeisances on the chopping block. So. He bowed down and the priest took a large uh, sword to cut off his head. Of course he knew what was happening, but he was completely dependent upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead at every moment. Manasa deha geho jokichu mo, tua apilu pade nanda kishwa. 
whatever happens to my body, mind and words, everything I surrender at your Lord's feet. So he bowed down, and at that moment when he was about to be killed, Goddess Kali could not tolerate. And she broke out from the statue with her associates, and at once killed all those Dakwits. And Jad Bharat was saved. At that time, Goddess Kali, she said to Jad Bharat, Oh, you are a great devotee. You are a great Vaishnav. Why are you hiding yourself from the world? Hmm? You are not giving benefit of your realization and everything to the people of the world. You are hiding yourself and cheating them all. Please, don't cheat them. Please help them. So then, it came to pass that after some time, there was a king. His name was Rahugana, Rahugana Maharaj. And he was very interested in Sadhu Sangha. So he was on his way to Kapil Ashram uh, to associate with the sages there. And he was riding on a palanquin that was carried by so many palanquin bearers. But along the way, they needed some extra help carrying the palanquin. And the palanquin bearers were looking and, oh, this person seems very strong. He can help. And they enlisted him in carrying the palanquin. So when Jad Bharat was carrying it, he was walking along, but he was looking very carefully that he should not step on any insects. Hmm? He wanted to give respect to everyone, hmm? even to an ant. So he was very carefully uh, stepping here and there and avoiding the ants, so he could not keep in step with the other carriers. In this way, the palanquin was shaking, and the king, he looked out from the side, Hey, what are you doing? Carry the palanquin properly. They assured him, yes, we'll carry it correctly. Again, Jadabharat was stepping here and there, and the palanquin was shaking. The king became angry. What's going on? Carry the palanquin properly. And then they told him, Your Majesty, we have this new bearer, and he's not cooperating. Hmm? So then the king, he chastised him. Hey, who are you? What are you doing? Hmm? I know that you cannot carry the palanquin very well, because you've been carrying it for so far. Hmm? Actually, you've just been enlisted a few minutes before. You carried it so far, maybe you're tired. Because you're not very strong, you look rather lean and thin. Jad Bharat was really well, strong and well built. And with sarcastic words, the king was chastising him. He said, look, I'm the king, you're my subject. You should obey me, if you disobey me, I'll punish you. Mm -hmm. So, at that time, Jad Bharat, he spoke to the king. He said to the king, actually, what you have said is true. I have not been carrying this palanquin because I am not this physical body. The activities of the physical body are not the activities of the self. Mm -hmm. I am not fat or thin or weak or strong because I am not this physical body. Only now, for a short time, I am in this physical body and you are in the physical body of a king and you have the ego that you are the king and you have the ego that I am your subject. So if you think that this is true, then by all means, punish me. When the king heard this, he was astonished. He was astonished. And he came down from the palanquin and gave Dandavat Pranam at the lotus feet of uh, Bharat, Jad Bharat. He said, who are you? Are you Kapil Dev? Are you Kavi, Havi, Antariksha, Prabuddha, Pipalayan, any of the Navayogendras? Or are you Narad? Who are you? So then, Jad Bharat said, do you remember in your dynasty, hmm? in a previous time, there was a king called Bharat Maharaj? The king said, yes, very great personality. In he, while he was young, he left everything and went to the forest. Hmm? Then Jad Bharat said, oh, I am that very king, Bharat. So the, the king was amazed. Here again, the Jad Bharat, he began to tell his own life history to Rahugan Maharaj. Just as we heard yesterday, Narad Rishi explained his life history to Vyasadev. Gop Kumar explained his life history to Matul Brahman. Because when the Guru explains his life history to the disciple, it makes their shadha very strong. So he explained, I was that king, I left everything, but I became attached to a deer. Then I took birth as a deer. And now I took birth in a Brahmin family, and I am hiding my position. So the king posed many questions to uh, Bharat Maharaj about Atma Tatma, the soul and the body, and how to become free from this world and attain 
love of God. And in the end, then Bharat instructed him, Ruhuganaitas tapasa na jati, na cheja nirvapana kriyadva, na chandasan naiva jalagni surya bina mahat pada rajobi sheikam. Because the king was confused. You have explained Atma Tattva and these things to me, but I cannot properly understand. So Bharat Maharaj gave the conclusion. It is not by austerities, it is not by study of the Vedas, it is not by the performance of sacrifice, it is not by observing one's various duties, worldly duties, etc., that one can understand the Absolute Truth. There's only one way a person can understand the Truth. What is that? One has to take Abhishek, complete shower, hmm? completely shower oneself in the foot dust of a Maha Bhagavad Vaishnava, in the foot dust of a pure devotee, to surrender oneself there and pray. O Gurudev, O Vaishnava Thakur, sprinkle your mercy that the Supreme Personality of Godhead's lotus feet may appear within my heart. Hmm? So, this is the history of Bharat Maharaj. And there are some very important teachings in it for us. First of all, when Bharat Maharaj became attached, he did not have to go down. But he did not take Sadhu Sangha. He did not go to any very advanced Vaishnava, take shelter there and be saved. So here, first teaching, if one is becoming attached, already, actually we are already attached. 